In the last few years, there were quite a lot of videos about the most extreme objects discovered in our galaxy. Most massive planets, largest stars, largest galaxies, and of course, the largest galactic structures discovered in the last few years. But with time, some of these objects actually lose their status, either because the scientists have discovered something even more massive or even more spectacular, or, in most cases, because some additional studies discovered that the original calculations might have actually not really been correct. This is essentially what happened to the previous largest star discovered in the galaxy, UI Scuti. The video about this should be somewhere in the description. But today we're going to be talking about the most massive stars, and specifically this new discovery that you can sort of see in this image, with the paper as always in the description below. Oh yeah, almost forgot. Hello wonderful person, this is Anton. And so today we're going to be discussing this relatively new discovery that was actually only made a few days ago, of what seems to be the most massive star in the galaxy, or technically the most massive baby star in the galaxy, that's only about 40,000 years old, but seems to already exhibit incredible effects, possess a lot of mass, and even produce extremely powerful magnetic fields that we've never really seen before. With all of this never before seen anywhere, and naturally presenting an opportunity to study how some of these most massive stars actually develop from scratch, with the star itself currently being referred to as Mir 2, located in a relatively small molecular cloud known as BYF 73. And so what exactly have the scientists found here, and why is this such an exciting discovery? Well first I guess let's talk about some of the other stars, the stars whose mass has already been confirmed, that despite being detected years ago, we still don't really know much about. So for example, in one of the James Webb videos, I've briefly discussed the star known as R136A1, located in the Large Magellanic Cloud Galaxy, in a nebula known as the Tarantula Nebula, and specifically in a cluster known as R136. In that video I mentioned that this is the most massive star known to us. But little did I know that there was actually a study not so long ago that might have recalculated its original mass suggesting that it's actually a lot less massive, making the star officially lose its status and potentially now becoming the third most massive star ever discovered, with the two stars that are slightly more massive being BAT 9998, a star that's maybe about 226 solar masses located in the Tarantula Nebula as well, which is about 30 solar masses higher than R136A1, and the most massive star is potentially what's known as the Westerhout 49-2, an extremely bright star located in the cloud known as Westerhout 49, that could be in theory the most massive and the brightest star discovered, but because the observations here are even less detailed, the actual mass of the star is definitely not known, but it's assumed to be possibly around 250 solar masses, with many of these very massive stars often located inside various molecular clouds with a lot of high-intensity star formation. Places like the Tarantula Nebula that have the highest amount of stars being generated within about 1 million light years away from planet Earth, seems to contain the most such objects. Once again, the image from the James Webb makes this pretty clear. But in this case what we're seeing is at least a few million years old, with a lot of the material in this cloud already going through several stages of recycling Basically, a massive star explodes, creates a lot of gas, which then creates more stars, which then explode again. But some of the younger molecular clouds will often contain even more massive stars. Stars that could potentially maybe survive for just a few hundred thousand years. Stars that we kind of know nothing about, but stars whose evolution is super important to understand in order to figure out how pretty much everything in the universe evolved from the beginning of the universe itself. And of course, stars that would be so ridiculously massive that even their properties would be kind of impossible to predict unless we can actually see them and analyze them with telescopes. Stars that are not just 200 or 300 solar masses, but potentially even a thousand or even more. And it looks like, according to the new observations from the recent study, the scientists might have found one such star after all. According to the recent analysis, Mir 2 star part of the very young stellar nursery that has only developed less than 50,000 years ago, almost definitively contains an object in the middle that seems to represent at least half of the mass of the entire cloud, and this is approximately 1300 times the mass of the Sun, which is about 5 times as massive as the most massive star known to us. Although obviously in this case, this is not really a star yet, this is an object that's going to become a star, 
And so it's actually that evolutionary process that the scientists have been looking for for a very long time. At the moment, this object is essentially consuming a huge amount of gas, growing faster and faster, and produces most of its heat and most of its brightness because of the actual infalling of gas. As a matter of fact, this object is so massive and so powerful that there even seem to be unusual effects from the magnetic fields that create all sorts of effects that we don't really understand. To be more specific, the examination of polarized light by the SOFIA telescope was able to analyze the relationship between the magnetic field inside the gas, the gas density, and how all of this might affect the formation of the stars within. In the process of discovering that this object seems to contain some of the most powerful magnetic fields discovered in such objects, inside molecular clouds, and seems to consume mass and increase in size faster than anything we've ever seen. But more importantly, the unusually strong magnetic field seems to actually act in such a way that it prevents gravity from collapsing into other points. Or to rephrase this, it actually prevents other stars from forming. The magnetic fields seem to have accumulated into a single point, thus fitting this large giant in the middle, but not letting any other stars to form nearby. In a process once again confirming that in a lot of different objects with a lot of different magnetic particles inside of them, the magnetic fields at some point can actually even counteract gravity and cause effects that we cannot easily predict. Even computer simulations today would actually have trouble predicting this, mostly because magnetic fields are generally very, very difficult to model. On top of this, they've also discovered that this object, as always, possesses very powerful bipolar outflows, something that often looks something like this in a typical star system, with the particles moving at 40 km per second, but also being deflected by another structure, a very unusual structure, that the scientists are currently referring to as the streamer. This also has a mass of about 500 solar masses. And in this case, the jets from the star and this unusual streamer are sort of forming a kind of a perpendicular magnetic field formation, which sort of causes the entire structure to have very unusual effects. But the most important finding here is really in regards to the star itself. Because of its ridiculously powerful consumption of gas, it seems to produce anywhere from 33% to 50% of all of the luminosity and power in the entire cloud, making this a very unique object, a very powerful object, and basically the youngest massive star ever discovered. But more importantly, a potential future record holder for the most massive star in the Milky Way galaxy. It's not going to have nuclear fusion and become a star for at least a few thousand years, possibly even a little bit longer, but because of its ridiculous mass, we don't even know when it's going to start. As a matter of fact, it might still surprise us and produce effects that nobody expects, even within our lifetimes, making this a pretty exciting and a pretty unusual object, only 40,000 years old, but already possessing so many unusual effects. But for now, unfortunately, that's all we know. It's a pretty exciting object, and hopefully more telescopes will get to analyze this in the next few years, but until they do, this is the only image we have, providing a lot of detail. Once we do discover something else though, I'll make sure to follow this up with another video. Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who has learned about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, and maybe support the show on Patreon by joining Gen membership or by buying a wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.